when I came up with the idea of doing these uh, little uh, presentations to show various things in SPSS, um, I thought, well, they're going to be much more interesting than reading the book, and it'd be a nice little thing that people could go and watch and uh, you know keep themselves entertained on those lonely cold nights. Uh, but I've just just been uh, kind of looking over some of the ones that I've already done, and they're all terrible, uh, really, really, really unbelievably boring. However, this one, this one is going to be fantastic. And the reason for that is because it's all about graphs and graphs are the most exciting thing in the universe, really. So sit down with a nice big syringe of heroin and off we go into the exciting world of graphs. Now, in the book chapter, I spend quite a lot of time telling you uh, how to draw different types of graphs. And that's all well and good. But one of the things that it did mean is that I didn't really have a lot of space to talk about how you can edit graphs in SPSS. And editing graphs can be quite a useful thing to do because the graphs that pop out of SPSS don't always look how you want them to look. Now, one of the kind of quite tragic things about uh, about being me is that you can get really quite uh, excited <laughs> perhaps that's the wrong word but in a way excited about um, a good graph a good graph says a million words and you know it's like looking at uh, I don't know a nice Picasso or something it's just they're things of great beauty but when they're pink they can be things of hideous ugliness so edit your graphs to present your data well well in you know in the chapter i go on for bloody pages about this about how graphs should look and how they should do this and they shouldn't do that and uh that's because i really am quite sad however so that you can all impress me with your graphs in fact i expect every single person watching this uh, so that'll be one person then that'll be my mother um, to email me your beautiful graphs and uh, there'll be a cash prize of zero pence or that's dollars for the American uh, to the best graph that I receive although if you can get SPSS to make your graphs look like a cat then well I might send you something nice anyway in the book chapter um, we use an example and I'm going to use that example here of men and women watching different types of films and looking at how aroused they get by those films and that arousal is supposed to indicate how much they like the film and we use two films Bridget Jones's Diary which is supposed to appeal to women it's uh well I don't know if this is a British thing but it's known as a chick flick uh whereas Memento um is well it's kind of gender non-specific really so it should appeal equally I think in theory so we have these data these are up on the screen now and to draw a graph of them all we do is use SPSS graph menu and then the chart builder now the chart builder gives us a nice little window like this and basically we have this canvas here canvas makes it sound like you're making a painting which I kind of like um, so you have a canvas on which to create your masterpiece and it also gives you um, you know unlike if you were uh, a great artist uh, who they don't have a number of templates that they can pick um, but maybe they should I don't know you know here's a template for a vase of sunflowers or whatever uh, but in SPSS it gives you some templates for graphs so bar charts you can see there's a whole variety of bar charts here line charts so on and so forth all explained in the book all of it every single one now we want to do a bar graph so we go to the bar menu and what we end up wanting to do is what's known as a clustered bar chart so we double click on this and lo and behold we get a nice little clustered bar chart on our canvas and we also get a window that tells us uh, well allows us to set certain properties of the graph now really it's an absolute doddle um, to uh, to make I'm sorry I'm just the minute I say things I'm keep thinking hmm is that an English thing 
Doddle. Maybe. But anyway, hopefully you get what I mean. It's easy. It's really easy to make a graph. Uh, what we want to do is we want to plot arousal levels on the y-axis. So there we go. We just drag it over there. And we want to plot film along the x-axis. So the type of film. So we can just drag that into the x-axis. So we've got Bridget Jones' diary then Memento. But also we want to split these bars up by gender so we can have a look at the males and the females separately. So we can drag gender into our little cluster box over here. So there we go. Our graph is done. Now the other thing we can do is display error bar graphs. Uh, sorry, error bars on the graph. And um, well in the book again I think I probably dribble slightly manically about the wonders of error bars. So tick that as well. Anything we tick over here in the properties box, we have to click on apply to apply it to the graph. So we have some nice error bars. That's all there is to it. If you want to look at other types of graphs, then have a play around, read the book, or just go to the cinema instead. Click on OK. And in our output viewer, we get a beautiful graph. Well, a graph. Now the main purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to edit this. Now if you're, well, you know, if you're a student doing a, a project or something, then chances are you're going to want to print this out in black and white and not, you know, not spend lots of money on colour printing. Uh, if you're doing a PhD or if you're an academic and you're submitting something to a journal, again, typically you just want a black and white graph. So having these coloured graphs that SPSS produces is not always what you want. So to edit a graph, all we need to do is just double click on it. So we highlight it in the uh, viewer and double click on it. And it pops up in its own little window known as the chart editor. And basically you can just, you can pretty much edit any aspect of the graph. This is one of the things that SPSS has really improved on in uh, recent editions. Uh, you've got quite a lot of flexibility now to mess around with your graph. So. The first thing we can do is have a look at the background. Now you'll notice if you click on anything in the graph, it gets highlighted. So I just clicked on the bars, they got highlighted in blue. If I click on the background, that gets highlighted in blue. So you can see what, what you're gonna edit by seeing what's surrounded by blue. So if we click on the background to edit it, we just do a double click. And having done that, we get this properties window. Ooh, and uh, that allows us to change various things. Now, as far as the background goes, well, we have this tab up here, fill and border, so we can um, change the fill color. Our fill color at the moment is this kind of revolting gray, and it's really quite pointless. We may as well just get rid of it. So we can select fill here, and instead of that gray, why don't we make it transparent? Now this thing here with the little slash through it, that's transparent color, I guess transparent isn't strictly speaking a color but anyway uh, it's transparent so we could apply that anything we do in this properties box we have to click on apply for it to work so apply and whoa the background's gone hurrah uh, but we can also well look it's got a nasty border look at this border we don't need that border do we need that border no so we can select it again check the border and again make it transparent and click on apply there we go, no border. That's looking better already. Minimalism, it's the way forward. We can also edit things like the axes. So if we select the Y axis, you can uh, see it's highlighted in blue, which tells us that that's what we're editing. And over here in the properties, well, to start off with, we could edit the scale. So we can edit the, the range of scores displayed. Uh, so the minimum, maximum, and the increment so let's change this. Uh, SPSS by default has turned them, has made the maximum 40, but let's make it 35. Let's stretch the graph out a bit. So we can apply that. That's changed. But by changing that, SPSS in its infinite wisdom has decided that we want it to start at five, which we don't. We want it to start at zero. So again, we can change that to zero. So notice as we change these things, the autos are getting switched off, which is a good thing. Uh, but now, now we've set those two things, SPSS says, well, let's have a major increment of 10. So it just goes 10, 20, 30. Well, 
that's rubbish too let's change that to five and apply that now that's starting to look quite good in its own special little way we can also change the lines the line at the moment is a solid black line well we could change it if we we can change it to one of these styles so let's have say a dotted or sort of dashed line and notice that it's changed to dashed at the moment it's black we could make that another color so uh, we could for example change it to lilac there you go uh, obviously that's disgusting and far far too much like pink for my taste uh, so we could make it green greens much nicer color make it green there it is it's green or we could make it blue so on and so forth uh, but of course realistically you're probably just gonna want it to be black but you know the point is you could change it if you wanted to the other thing we can change is the labels of the axis and the tick marks so if we select this tab here we can uh, choose not to display the axis title so we can deselect that click on apply look the title has gone I have no idea why you would want to do that because you should always label your graphs so uh, let's have it back you can also choose whether to display the labels of the ticks so these numbers and again so you could get rid of that if you wanted to but again I have no idea why you would want to but you could and you could get rid of the tick marks so these little horizontal lines so you could deselect display ticks they go away uh, let's put them back but you can also change their position so at the moment they stick outward from the axis you can make them stick inward instead or indeed you can make them bisect the axis like that so you can change lots and lots of things you can do much the same if you uh, select the x-axis like so we've got the the same uh, the same options really we can uh, change the line and uh, at the moment it's a solid black line again but I'm going to change this to transparent we don't really need that line lines are for suckers um, we can also change the labels and ticks so again we could choose not to display the axis title although that's a pretty bad idea uh, we could choose not to display the labels although that's a pretty bad idea too we could choose not to display the ticks which in this case well we don't really need the ticks at all you know they're just not doing anything really um, also if we go to this categories tab well we can do a few uh, interesting things here I use the term interesting fairly liberally um, at the moment we've got Bridget Jones's diary displayed before Memento now this list is the order in which the graph displays those two things now we can move them around so we could shift memento up or indeed shift Bridget Jones's diary down and if we click on apply it switches them so we've now got memento followed by Bridget Jones's diary if we switch them back the other way and apply then they go back the other way and we can do the same with gender so up here we've selected the variable film but if you select the variable gender then again at the moment we've got males followed by females but if we shift the order of these and click on apply they reverse so this is quite good because it means that you know if you if you if you've ordered your you know things in a certain way and you know you don't like how it looks you can you know you've got quite a lot of versatility to change it around now the other thing you can do is change the bars so if we select the bars well you can see that they're all selected you've got various options here um, so for example you can make the bars skinny or wide like so so then they've gone all skinny uh, let's make them really skinny I mean that's that's horrible why would you do that uh, I like them quite wide so let's have them wide so they're actually touching each other because they're friends you can also uh, change the gap between the clusters so we've got a gap here that we can either make very wide by changing that so now it's like the two films you know one of them really smells they hate each other less at opposite ends of the room or we could make them like mega 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 close to them so there's no gap between the clusters at all I mean the defaults here are pretty 
pretty good to be honest you you know normally want sort of a bit of a gap between the two but the, the point is you can change it um, the other thing you can do is you can add effects so for example you could add a shadow to the bars but don't don't ever do this because shadows hideous unnecessary just they're just plain wrong and even worse you could add a 3d effect but oh my god that's just horrible it doesn't well it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't tell you anything don't do it look at those error bars they're just hideous and you can't read them so although you can change these things don't and uh, if you know because if you do if you if you do a graph that's 3d or has a shadow effect the world will end really it ends it's true if you don't believe me just try it but on your head be it because when the world ends all of the world will blame you for ending it we can also change these colors by selecting the bars for the different categories separately so we can select the female bars notice now only the green ones are highlighted and over here we've got again fill and border so we could change the outline color so the line around it if we don't happen to like the color black for a line but you know it's a good color or you can change fill color which is currently green but if you wanted like a you know a nice monochrome graph then you might want to change that to say white and if we select the male bars we could change the fill from blue to say gray so now we've got a nice kind of grayscale graph finally there's various buttons up here and a lot of these relate to uh, well you know various things you might want to do like this is adding text to the graph if we wanted to add some text see we can add some text this is a graph and you, you know you can do all sorts of other things um, but one that I do want to draw your attention to is this one that looks a bit like uh, you know a portcullis on a castle and that does grid lines so if you click on that you get some grid lines on your graph and again these are editable so for example these vertical grid lines not really very useful in this graph so we could make them transparent to get rid of them uh, in theory you should be able to uh, delete them as well by pressing delete and these horizontal ones well maybe we don't want them to be big thick lines like that so we might make them dotted and maybe we maybe we change them to grey there that's nice isn't it so there you have it some nice grid lines uh, some pretty pointless text and a nicely edited graph once you've done all this stuff you can simply close this window and in your viewer